Well, I want to ask you, with, with a given form, I wonder if we have an image, just a random image. Do you, do you think <coughs> of the form? Do you sketch it out? Do you then find the materials to make that form? Or do you let the material be your guide in a way? How generally? I mean, it's Both. A, all of those. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, sometimes things come from very, very specific images. Okay. And then memory, to me, is such a wonderful, bad... Um, sort of accommodator of information, you know, a memory is not exact, it's inexact, and I like that kind of failure that by the time I start <coughs> to draw from memory, so many things have gone missing, and the thing that I'm then beginning to draw is just a, an approximate, or what I call a bad copy, and that gradual deterioration of the original thing is, is really important. So that's one thing. But then something like the, the cardboard, not, not those, but the small work, mm -hmm. which is just cardboard um, crushed and just manipulated, I think comes very much from, you know, again, I have to sort of pay homage to somebody like Picasso, you know, mm -hmm. who used quite direct um, collage techniques yeah. <laughs> to, to make his work. Uh, and I think those, those very straightforward ways of making are, are incredible. He did say this wonderful thing, before you use a nail, you have to invent it, which I mean, I think is suggesting that mm. the way you join these materials, like his corrugated cardboard pieces, which are mm. cast in bronze, but things like that small shelf that's at the Tate with the tassels. I never yes. know what it's called that piece, but it's just such a delicately yeah. um, joined together <coughs> piece, you know, that but that invention of ways of joining completely incongruous materials mm. absolutely fascinates me. And, and, you know, like Picasso media, I mean, I'm thinking of um, Picasso's um, Glass of Absinthe, the sculpture oh, yes, of Moment, yes, which is yes, painted, yes. and, you know, Picasso dresses up, targets up his sculpture, so there's not a kind of um, mm. purity or truth to materials, and that's, again, yeah. very resonant with you, this yeah. dialogue between sculpture and painting, and it's, there's always a contamination, it's not pure, it's not... No, I love, love, I love that idea of contamination. The um, um, feeling I have about what I do, the sort of kind of strange ambivalence and guilt I have about the surfaces of my work, is because I think is they are essentially decorative, and therefore is decoration another of those words that's sort of slightly forbidden. You know, something we shouldn't be doing as fine art. <laughs> Only if it's intuitive. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> or inspired. Yes, yeah. But it's. Um, but I think Picasso in that glass of absinthe. Mm -hmm. It was. It's just. You almost feel the timing of it. You can almost sense that you're in mm -hmm. the present tense of when that's, that's done. And I think that's another syntactical um, quality that I'm absolutely f fascinated by, is whether uh, a sculpture conveys its sense of grammatical tense. Is it in the present tense when we're looking at it? Or is it something in the past tense? Or even a f in a future tense? Is it about to be? Mm -hmm. And I think you know, we can actually sense these in works as we walk around them, mm. you know. And I think the act of painting or daubing or smearing mm. um, or contaminating, as you say, which is fantastic, um, I think it's, for me, it's a desire to try and keep something alive to the last yeah. possible <coughs> minute. It's, it's trying to make it be mm. in the present mm. tense, so it's sort of happening now, and I think that's what my relationship with yeah. the surface is and with paint.